Bright Star has um, created uh, an application called ScanStar. And what that will allow me to do for any of your assets where you have placed a barcode, now I can scan that and then import that data into client management. And after it's there, of course, then I can maybe enter financial information, which is that second bullet down. Um, on the barcode itself, you'll see there are really three options, so receiving assets, tracking those assets, or verifying those assets once they switch locations. So the ScanStar product for BCM, again, another way that you're going to be able to manage the inventory for your um, assets. Um, the second option there is this hardware financial management, still kind of in, in the realm of inventory management, but what we're doing now is capturing purchase information, warranty and support information. Um, really a lot of those financial aspects, we can start to put that on an asset itself. So if we take a look at what that looks like, I'm still looking at the same device that we were looking at earlier with respect to that summary information, that summary inventory. And at the very bottom is the financial asset management. So here on this first one, this parameters tab, I'll double click because that's a table, but this is information as it pertains to the financial aspect. And you can import this data in or you can enter it on the spot, but you'll notice at the very top you'll get to decide what you're going to source your life cycle status information with. So this machine currently deployed. If you'll think about that life cycle approach, and we said at the very end was retirement, how are you disposing of your assets, but you can change the status of that asset, run the reports, et cetera. Device information, purchase information, warranty and support information, these are all financial aspects that I'm gathering for that device. I'm just going to page down a little bit. My dates are here, my cost for a purchase versus a lease. Now we're looking at um, an asset where I put an agent on the machine, but if you have assets out there that can't receive my agent like a printer, you can still have those assets in client management and keep um, a record, if you will, of this information. So I'll pull one of those up. Um, before I do that, I'm just going to cancel this screen. Um, this attached devices so you can add relationships here. Um, there's only the one and this is a printer, and then if you want to store your, um, here's an invoice for the purchase of this device, then you can add your attachments um, and store that data, again, all on this um, one asset record. Okay, so if we contrast that, I'm just going to close this down, and I'm going to open up uh, the device group and look at this HP printer. So as I mouse over this, you'll notice that record, too, has the financial asset management. And again, it looks very similar, but my point here is you can um, create or track that information for assets that have the agent as well as assets that do not have the agent in the environment. So this would be a case maybe you scanned them with the uh, ScanStar, they're inside of client management, and you want to now uh, start tracking that financial data. Okay, so here let's head back to the presentation and move into Deployment Manager. So when we talk about Deployment Manager, I can deploy software as well as operating systems. I'm going to run through a software deployment so we can see what that looks like. And as you kind of look left to right here, the first step is creating the package. The next step is publishing that package, so it can be to my master or the relays, assigning it to my devices, um, doing the installation, and then ultimately looking at that distribution status. So if we head back in, I'm going to move into the package creation. I'll walk through the wizard so, again, we can see the simplicity. Um, here I'm on my wizards. Here's the one for package creation. It's asking me the location, and you'll notice here my package type. I have two that I can do. It's saying custom package, and that just means not an MSI. So I've grabbed um, a couple of EXEs, so we'll opt for the custom package on these. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. Um, now it's asking me for the name of uh, the package, and let me remind myself right quick. Um, let's do Win, uh, win SCP. Let's do Win SCP. Five, seven. Okay, so here we're just giving it a name. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. 
the destination path. So this is I'm if I'm deploying this and I need to push it down to the machine so they'll have it on a local directory. So here I'm just gonna call it um on their machines, I'm going to create a BCM directory, and I'm going to drop them there. What's my run command? So here's where I'm going to go out to that piece of software. And again, when they're the executables, if there is a switch that you need to put on that to, let's say, make it silent, then you would need to do that here. Otherwise, it's just going to run through the, uh, uh, that executable running the actual setup. So if there's any questions that need to be answered, et cetera, then your end user would see that. If I opt for that MSI package, well, then there are um, native commands that I can um, attach to make it silent, et cetera. Um, so the interface ends up being a little different, the questions that are asked when we're packaging it, if I'm doing a custom package versus the MSI. But that one will just leave it as it is. Here I'm going to next, we're going to add the file. So again, heading back to that directory where we've um, brought this software down. And again, we just did that Win SCP. When I'm doing this, I can see there it's got the file size, et cetera. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Next. And then uh, my publishing. So publish this to the master, and I'll finish. Now when we're doing software deployments, there's um, a process. So the first one, of course, creating that package. Um, now I'm going to create an operational rule that would help with the distribution of said package. So here I'll go ahead and say yes. You'll notice it's still just kind of taking me through this wizard process. Now the nice thing about the operational rules I mean, you'll see this when I bring it up, is it opens the gamut of how specific you want to be when you're going to do this software distribution. So here it's got the name. Again, just source that from what we had earlier. Um, here I'm doing an operational rule versus a quick link. The difference is, and we'll see this a little bit later, there's a um, My Apps functionality that kind of poses as an advertisement. And so what you're doing is advertising um, this particular package, and it's up to your end user to go and pull it down versus doing uh, this operational rule where we potentially would push this down to the end user. This next one, do I want this available in my integrated solutions, i.e., do I want my service desk technicians to be able to deploy this particular package? If I do, then I'm saying available in my integrated solutions. Okay, so here we'll go ahead and say next. Now, the operational rules. So out of the box, there are about 170 operational rules that are available to you. Um, so you may want to do things like provide the user with a message box. Um, here I'll just do one that's very simple. When I add this, here's the questions that you would need to answer. So the title, what text do you want to give them, um, what is the button. So basically this message box would come up, they would have to say okay, and then I would proceed through my installation. Some of the other things you may want to do, because you'll recall that I said I was going to create that directory, so you may want to clean up that directory. So you'll have this directory and file handling where you can delete certain directories or files that you've put down there. So again, the operational rules is quite exhaustive. There again, I think there's around 170 different aspects that you could include with any of your packaging. Um, Okay, so here we'll just say cancel. The only thing I'm going to do is just the installation package, but you can have as many in here as you so desire. I'm going to go ahead and say next. Um, there I've got my package, and we'll just finish it. And then the last step is, again, with my distribution. So if we say yes, now it's saying who do you want to target to receive this? I'm just going to target a specific device. My assigning versus advertising, i.e. me pushing it to them versus me advertising it so it allow them to pull it. And let's go with the um, assign. The default schedule is fine. And then here we're just pulling a specific machine. And let's go with this machine. Okay? And so then we'll finish it. Now, um, again, that was on the normal schedule, so the machine would need to check in um, and then that uh, that deployment would go through. But in the interim, let's take a look and see what that would look like. So what I'm going to do is go into my packages. And the one that um, actually got pushed out here, 
um, so we can see. I'm looking at Win SCP, which is a secure copy application that we send down. So I can see I um, executed it or pushed it to one of the machines, and then I advertised it to another one. So it's sitting in their My Apps, waiting for them to pull it down. So this will kind of be that last step. So you can see that distribution status. Okay. So here we'll head back to the deck and move forward to software asset management. So you've got a couple things here. Manage the software licenses. So here is where you would go in and say, we purchased however many copies of application A. I want to see, because I'm doing my software inventory, I'm going to be able to see um, where it's installed. And here's my licensing, so are we in or out of compliance? And so at that point, it's kind of up to you if you want to say, yes, we need to buy additional licenses, or maybe we're doing the monitoring and someone needed an application for a project, the project is over so we can reclaim or uninstall the software from that machine and, and reclaim that license. The other thing you see there is blocking unauthorized applications. And so what you have the ability to do is block based upon what you found out there in your inventory, or you can block things that you know are out in the Internet but maybe not on your network yet. So now what I'm doing is blocking things that I know potentially cause problems. And so if we take a look at this part, head back to our demonstration. And this, too, is um, from a wizard. So what I'm going to do is just scoot down a little bit and opt for the application management. And when this comes up, you'll notice three things. So manage my software licenses, where we're going to go in and, and put our quantities, et cetera. That second bullet talks about um, prohibiting, protecting, monitoring applications. So we'll do one of, one of each of these. So if we go the route of the software license, Three steps. So here I'm going to go ahead and add. And what this will allow you to do is I'm looking at my discovered software. So I can peruse through this list, or I can show my licensed units. Um, so here let's kind of go down the line here, and we'll just choose this one. Not even sure if we have it in our environment, but you'll notice as this is coming up, I can say, yes, monitor this application, and what's my quantity of licenses. So let's come in here and say we have five. The signing. So who am I signing this to? So this is a, a nice feature because what this is going to allow you to do is maybe your development group has access to um, Studio, but that's the only set of machines that you're going to authorize to use that. So if you find it on, let's say, an HR machine, that machine is unauthorized, and so you're not compliant. Now, it could be valid that they needed it, so you'll be able to make that determination, but here's where you can start to authorize or unauthorize machines to use the various software. Okay, so here what we're going to do is we could add a device group or we could add a device. I'm going to go ahead and do a group, and I'm going to be real specific and say just my demo machine. So if it finds it on any other box, they're unauthorized. And you'll notice here that its status is saying unauthorized. If I wanted to flip that switch, it's this last um, icon. Okay? So there it's making it authorized, or we can make it unauthorized. So again, we'll just say unauthorized, and we'll go ahead and finish. Okay? So it takes us into that um, particular application. So you'll notice here on the left, we're in application management, and we're under software license management, and more specifically, the one that we just opted for. So if we look at um, another one of these, let's say we want to look at my office suites. Um, so here I can see quickly the applications that make up the office suite, and then as we go into, um, let's say, the professional, and we'll hit the applications, I can see the two, four, six, seven, or eight different applications that make up 2010 Professional. And then again, I can enter my licenses and then see from the dashboard if we're in or out of compliance. So with this one, I can see we've not purchased any. We've got an authorization. I can see we have three installed, so we're over. So at this point, we would maybe perhaps want to go ahead and purchase some licenses get those deployed in the environment, et cetera. Now, um, when you want to look at the, the values here, I'm going to double-click on this chart that's going into the compliance, and let's look at all the results. 